I get a ton of questions about how my browser auto refreshes while I'm working in my videos. So I thought, why not make a video about it? There's actually a few different ways we can do it and we're gonna be exploring those in this video. Hi there, if you're new here, my name is Kevin and I make videos about how to make the web and how to make it look good while you're at it. Before I get into this week's video, I just want to give a really big thank you to both Angelique and Kahar. I hope I pronounced your name properly. At the end of the Bootstrap series, I made an announcement that I was launching a Patreon, and thanks to them, I've unlocked my first goal. Yeah! What this means is I'm getting a CodePen Pro account, and that's cool because it unlocks Professor Mode, as well as some other stuff as well that's all going to benefit you guys, so you guys should say a nice big thank you to them as well. Both of them, as well as anyone else who's pledging $10 or more a month, is going to be able to follow along in some of the videos I'm making live. Uh, in professor mode on CodePen, so there's the little uh, chat system that's in there. They can pause it while I'm working, play in the code, hit play again, get back up to where they are. Um, so that's really cool. So you can check that out if you want. Uh, there's other rewards at different tiers as well. So you can check out the, my Patreon account if you're curious about that. And if you have no idea what Patreon actually is, there is a link in the description below. Go click on that. I have a welcome video over there that explains it in a little bit more detail. Also, if you do head over there, I've put up a bonus video this week, but it's on the Patreon account. It's free to anybody. You don't have to be a patron to get access to it, uh, but it is over on Patreon. That video is looking at really cool and fun button effects that you can do, most of them using some pseudo elements, so you can go check that out on my Patreon. Uh, again, the link is down below. And with all of that out of the way, let's talk about auto refresh. finally. <laughs> now that I've used auto refresh, I don't think I could live without it. It's such an important, just makes your life so much better. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to do it. Some of them cost money and there is a freeway as well. The freeway does take a little bit more setup and it's using the command line. I'm gonna start this video off uh, looking at CodeKit and Prepros, which are pay ways of doing it. They offer you a lot of different stuff though. They're not just auto refreshing your browser. And after that, I'm gonna jump into the command line and we're gonna look at how we can do it for free, all set up using uh, NPM and in the command line. So the first one we're going to look at is CodeKit, which is a really popular option, and it's only available for Mac, though. The link is codekitapp.com. You can get it down below in the links. Uh, all the links I will be talking about will be down in the description below, so if you want to check any of these out, you can. You can see that it's $34. And uh, it does a lot of other things as well. It's not only for auto refreshing. It does a, a bunch of other stuff, but auto refresh is the focus of this video. Um, but just know that it does a lot more and we're gonna see a little bit more of the features of what else it can do. Uh, when we look at this app, which is Prepros. Now this is the one I personally use and I'm gonna show you how it works. It's really cool. Um, and it has, as far as I know, the same features as CodeKit. The big difference is it actually is a little bit cheaper. It's $29 instead of 34. And it's also available on Windows and Linux. So um, it has a free trial and it's an unlimited trial. It just gives you a little pop up. So you can try this out, uh, see if you like it. I'm gonna get rid of that. And I'm gonna open up Prepros. So here's the Prepros app. I've already downloaded and installed it. I have a license for it. I use it on all my projects. Um, and I want to bring in this new project into here. All I need to do is drag and drop it, and it's added in my auto refresh project right there. You can see the files that are in there. It's actually an FTP client as well. And if we take a look quickly in my settings, uh, settings. So the really big things in here, you'll see a few things that all look similar. There's the file watcher, the live preview, browser sync, and live reload. They look like they're doing a lot of the same thing. This is what files is it watching for changes. Um, the live preview involves it running a custom server. The browser sync involves synchronizing multiple browsers together. And this can be really useful if you have like a laptop and uh, your main computer and your phone and you want them all working together. You're scrolling on one of them and it's scrolling on all at the same time. Um, the live reload is what we're really after right now the FTP and the compiler settings. This is the really big thing that I use it for and I like it for as well. We can compile SAS or LESS or other languages if you're using any other languages, Markdown, Stylus, um, lots of other stuff. So you can turn my SAS into regular CSS. It can also minify my CSS. Uh, I can minify JavaScript. Um, it also has the auto prefixer built into it so I don't have to write prefixes on anything. It will automatically do it for me. Uh, again, I can minify my CSS and uh, all of that and with the JavaScript it can uh, uglify which is same as minifying my CSS So it does a whole bunch of stuff, but as far as auto refresh goes, it's really easy to do I just have to click this little icon here and hit preview 
and that will open it up in the window. Let's move this over now. And I already have this project open in Atom, which is my code editor of choice. So we'll open that up. Let me just move this over. Uh, and we'll take a quick look. Here's my H1, which is right there. And let's just change this over from that to white. Save. And look at that. It refreshed automatically. And I'm going to do an undo. Hit save. And it's changed. Uh, if you're using it in here, let's, uh, you know, auto. Maybe I want to put a hyphen there instead. I'm going to save. And it adds that right in there like that. So that's cool. And I'll save without it. And it's gone. Super awesome and cool and really easy to use. Uh, and again, as far as I know, CodeKit and uh, Prepros work really similar to one another. I've never used CodeKit, so I don't have any experience with it, but I know it's very highly regarded. And I use Prepros on all my projects and I love it, so I can't recommend it enough. Now we are going to look at a free option. And this is called Browser Sync. And it's actually, I think, what, uh, you know, it's Browser Sync. It's a very powerful thing. It's not just refreshing your page. Um, it can also synchronize browsers, just like I mentioned. Um, so you can mirror browsers. Uh, it also, it live reloads, URL pushing. Um, it, it's a really nice and free way to do what I was just using this for. It's easy to do, but to use it, uh, we have to use the command line and you need to have Node Package Manager. So you have to look up Node.js. You'd have to come to here and install the latest version. Whether you're on a Mac or PC, it'll probably auto detect what you're on. Um, I would just go with this one, the recommended for most users one. Download that and install it. It's just a really simple installer. It's nothing complicated. Um, it's a normal installer. So I'll go and open that up. And we'll see, it's just a straight up installer, computing the space requirements. It's taking a very long time for some reason. You just click next, accept, next, tell it where you want to install it. Now I already have it installed, but I would just click next, it's going to install it. No problem whatsoever. Uh, and when it's done, you can use it. So I'm going to exit out of that because I already do have it installed. Now the reason you need to have Node is because you need to use the Node Package Manager to use the browser sync here. And you can see anytime you see something saying use NPM, it's NPM stands for Node Package Manager. So if you're on a Mac, you can open up your terminal. If you're not sure how to open up terminal, just open your uh, spotlight search thing and type in terminal and you can open it like that. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the Windows key and R, which is gonna bring up my run dialog. So I have my run here. Um, we can do this just with the regular command line or command prompt. So there's my command prompt. I just find this really ugly looking. I don't like the fonts it uses. I don't like what it looks like at all. Uh, so another thing I can use, which is pretty much the same, I'm going to do a command R again, and I'm going to write PowerShell. And PowerShell is pretty much the same thing, but it looks a lot nicer. Now, now that I'm here, all I need to do is type, and it tells us what to do. Actually, let's just go look right here. It's telling us how we can install it. So just npm space install. We're going to do a hyphen g which is the same as writing global um, so we want it to be a global install we're installing it on our entire system and we're installing browser sync now if you've never used the command line if you want to do things for free this is the way to do it a lot of what uh, i'm using prepros for can be done for free you just have to know how to do it through the command line and most of it is done through npm npm is a really cool thing so now that i've hit return it's installing it doesn't take too long but it does have a bit of work to do um, so yeah npm is an awesome there's tons of things that are built on top of it or using it. Uh, there's things like Gulp and Grunt that you might have heard of and a lot of other really good and useful things. The auto prefixer that I really like, I can do with this. I can compile my SAS with this. I can do a lot of things. So getting used to the uh, this whole command line thing can be really, really useful. So we can see that it is gone and installed everything I need. Uh, I'm just going to clear and hit return to get rid of all that so we can be back to here. Um, so right now it's on my users, Kevin, and I'm going to do a CD space. CD stands for change directory. So I want to change directory and I want to go to my desktop. So I'm going to write desktop and now I'm on my desktop and then I'm going to write CD space because I want to change and I want to go into my folder. Now you might be going, well, I don't know how to navigate to my folder. I put it in a strange place. I can't find my desktop, whatever it is. So I'll show you the easy way to do this. I'm going to go back. So two dots is a backward step. So we'll go back to where I started and I'll show you the easy way of doing this. We'll go back to my desktop for a second here. I can write CD space 
and I can just take auto refresh here and drag it in there and it's gonna set it all up for me. I push return and it's in the right spot. So you don't actually have to remember how to CD through and get to where you want. This is by far the easier way of doing that. Okay, so we're in the right place and now we wanna be able to use browser sync. So it's really easy to do. I'm just gonna write in browser sync and put a space and I'm gonna write start because I want to start doing a few different things. The first thing is for browser sync to work properly, it needs to start up a little server. So I'm gonna do hyphen hyphen and write in server put a space and do a hyphen hyphen and write files. So the server is gonna start automatically. You could tell it to only start the server in another folder that's in here, but just by writing server like that, it's gonna start. For the files though, we do have to tell it what files to watch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a star.html because I want it to watch all of my HTML files. And I'm also gonna put a space and put star.css forward slash star.css. So in my auto refresh folder, it's gonna look for any HTML files and auto refresh them. And it's also going to look in a CSS folder and find any CSS files and refresh those. So I'm gonna push enter on my keyboard. It shouldn't take long and it should automatically pop up and you can see that it's watching files. So, and it says browser sync is connected. So obviously to know if it's actually working, we should test it out. So let's change our color just like we did before. I'm just gonna change that over to red and instantly as I save it changes, which is really cool. And then let's go over to my index and over here, let's just get rid of auto refresh and make it refresh and hit save. And pretty much instantly that changes as well. So really, really neat. Uh, let's put auto back, put a small R, save. Awesome. It's so much fun watching things auto refresh like that. And we'll go back to where we started. If you are using this, one thing um, you can see here, it's, it's noticed a file event, there was a change, so it reloaded my browser. So every time you make a change, that will probably pop up. Now, when you're finished with this, I could just close this out, but if you wanna stop it because you need to do anything else in your command line, uh, if you're on a Mac, it's Command C, and if you're on a PC, it's Control C. It's gonna ask if you wanna terminate the job, put yes, and there we go. Um, I'm back to here and it's not watching my files anymore. Just to show really quickly, you can also do this with a bit of shorthand. So I can do browser sync start. I can just do hyphen S hyphen F and the same thing I did before dot HTML CSS dot CSS hit return and it will be exactly the same. Every time you do this, it will automatically open your browser again. Uh, it lets you know that it is connected and just one last time. Let's make it yellow. And uh, it's literally as I'm pushing the save button, it is changing, so it's really neat. So there we go, that command line stuff wasn't so bad now, was it? And don't forget, you can do it a lot faster now. You've, we've gone through the whole setup of everything and we had to do everything to get it installed on our system. Now for each project, it's just a few lines in the command line. It goes really fast and easy and it's a nice free option that you can use. Now don't forget about the bonus video over on Patreon. Go down to the description below, find the link for my Patreon and you'll easily find the video over there. And thanks a lot for watching this video. If you liked it, and I'm guessing you did because you made it all the way to the end, but leave a comment down below to let me know if you have any questions questions, uh, anything like that. Also, don't be shy, leave a comment down below. And remember, until next time, try and make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.